Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Holden Gabriel. I am a 16 year old sophomore that goes to Galleon High School and today I will be teaching you about the Southern Resident Orcas. Now back in July, I went to Seattle, Washington to participate in the Marine Naturalist Training Program which is an adult program where they train and educate people to become certified marine naturalists. Despite my age, I was actually accepted into the program and I had a wonderful experience in there. And now I will be sharing you my knowledge on the Southern Resident Orcas. So let's get right to it. Okay. So first we're going to start off with what are orcas? Orcas, or killer whales, are large black and white toothed marine mammals that belong to the order Cetacea. Cetaceans are whales, dolphins, or porpoises. They inhabit all oceans of the world, traveling in family groups known as pods, working together to hunt and kill prey. Calves will stay with their mothers their entire lives, never leaving their side. Males grow up to be 25 to 30 feet long and weigh up to 12,000 pounds when fully grown, while females grow up to be 18 to 24 feet long and weigh up to 8,000 to 11,000 pounds when fully grown. They are one of the most intelligent animals in the animal kingdom, having many qualities similar to human characteristics, like self-awareness, selflessness, problem-solving, emotions, and collaboration. They are highly emotional creatures that care for one another just like humans do. Uh, something I want to add, what triggers this is a part of the brain in the limbic system of an orca called the paralimbic cleft. This is a part of the brain that we only just recently found out about a few years back. And from what we learned, it is only a part of the brain that cetaceans, like orcas, have. Humans do not have this part of the brain. And the paralimbic cleft triggers high frequent emotions that allow them to feel happiness, sadness, and anger more often than humans do, which it makes it a lot more interesting than most human emotions. Each individual orca has a distinct call that allows podmates to identify each other, as well as distinct markings, saddle patches, and dorsal fins. So orcas are actually identifiable. We can actually identify individual orcas based on these things right here. This is what the Whale Museum does to give orcas code names or nicknames. Now we're going to go on to the next slide. Uh, what does the diet of an orca consist of? An orca's diet depends on what ecotype they belong to. An ecotype is, is a specific race or type of animal or plant species that inhabits a distinct habitat. There are 10 different ecotypes in the worldwide orca population. So 10 different ecotypes that eat different things. The southern resident orcas right here, or just resident orcas, eat fish species, transient seals, sea lions, other species of cetacean, offshore fish and shark species, North Atlantic type 1, herring and mackerel, North Atlantic type 2, other species of cetacean, type A, uh, minke whales, type B, large uh, seals, type B, small penguins, type C, Antarctic toothfish, and type D, Patagonian toothfish. So, based on what their ecotype is, is what, what will tell you what their diet is. Gonna go on here. Now we're gonna get on to the main, the main attraction of this slideshow. Who are the southern resident orcas? The southern resident orcas are a small population of resident orcas that live along the Pacific U.S. coastline. The population is divided into three different subgroups popularly known as J, K, and L pod. In 2005, the population was listed as, an endang as endangered under the Endangered Species Act, making it the only population of orcas to be listed under this protection act. With only 74 individuals currently left, scientists fear that this population of resident orcas may go extinct in the near future. Now, in recent months, there were only 72 individuals, but recently, there were two calves born in the population, so that makes it up to 74, which is really good for the southern resident orcas. Alrighty, now we're going to talk about what is threatening the southern residents. What is making them so endangered to the point where their population specifically is put on the endangered species list? Well, first we have toxins. Trash, food, and other products are day by day being dumped into the ocean, carrying chemicals that can be dangerously toxic. The local Chinook salmon population will consume these toxins, which are also consumed by southern resident orcas who prey on Chinook salmon. Because of this, orcas are the most contained marine mammals in the world. Uh, there's also overfishing. Chinook salmon makes up 98% of the southern resident's diet, but due to overfishing the salmon and building of river dams, the salmon population has declined drastically. While some orcas have adapted to eating other species of salmon from time to time, they mainly rely on Chinook salmon. So, a little difference between humans and orcas is orcas cannot change their diet. Humans, they could be, they're omnivores. We're naturally born omnivores. 
but we can actually change our diet to the point where we are just herbivores or vegan. Uh, orcas cannot do that. They rely on certain food sources. The southern residents mainly rely on Chinook salmon. While, like it says here, uh, some have actually adapted to eat other species of salmon from time to time, but they mainly rely on Chinook salmon and don't exactly stay with that species for long. Then, last but not least, we have vessel traffic. Orcas and other species of cetacean rely on their sensitive hearing for navigation, communication, and hunting. Two cetaceans, like orcas, use echolocation to hunt their prey. Echolocation is the ability to locate objects using reflecting sounds. Unfortunately for the orcas, large vessels make it difficult to use their hearing and echolocation. So large vessels like cruise ships or cargo ships, those sailing across the ocean make it very difficult for orcas to hunt and communicate with each other. Therefore, their echolocation is sometimes worthless. Now we're going to go on to the next slide here. Now what else is threatening the southern resident orcas? From the mid-60s to 1976, 58 southern resident orcas were captured by Ted Griffin and Don Goldsberry and were sold to marine parks all around the world. The southern resident population has never been able to recover from such an abundant removal of orca individuals. One of these many uptake, uh, roundups taking place on August 8, 1970, where seven young orcas were ripped from their mothers in Penn Cove and shipped to marine parks in Japan, Australia, France, the United Kingdom, and the United States. The only remaining survivor of the seven captured cats is Lolita, who has lived in the Miami Sea Aquarium for almost 50 years. As you can see here, there are two YouTube links, but I unfortunately will not be able to show this due to the fact that I do not want the Crestline Public Library to be copyrighted in any way. Um, but if you do want the links, uh, they're right here. Also, you could uh, message me. I will be showing my uh, contact info so I can get those uh, links to you. Now, uh, how can you help the Southern Resident Orcas? Uh, just a few things you can do. Um, there's, you don't have to make a lifelong commitment or anything. Uh, you got to purchase seafood from sustainable fisheries, purchase and use environment-friendly products, conserve energy, water, and other natural resources, support salmon farms and breeding programs, properly dispose hazardous materials, reduce, reuse, and recycle, Re refuse to eat Chinook salmon, buy organically grown food, and instead of driving, walk or bike if the, uh, your destination is close by. Now here is my contact info. Uh, if you have any questions about the Southern residents or just orcas in general, uh, here's my Instagram. Uh, I don't know if you guys can read it, but underscore dot H O dot. <laughs> you just type in holding Gabriel and you'll find it. And then my email, hgabrielorkinus at gmail.com. That is my main email I use, so you can email me through that and ask any questions you have. Now, with that being said, I would like to thank you all very much for watching this video, and I hope you have a good day. See you later.